We made it to episode 40, Fel. Welcome to Hi Felicia. Hi Felicia. Hi Felicia. Hi, Fel. What a week. What a week. We have to start with Justin Timberlake. Absolutely. We have to start <laughs> with Justin Timberlake. We saw him Monday night at Barclays. I'm still hungover. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not still hungover from Monday night, but we had fun. We did have fun. We had Unbeknownst, so we had fun. We started out with fun. dinner. We had some dinner. Then we met your, some of your friends. Then we met some new friends. Then we met Can we talk friends. about the girls that we met? Sure. We met these three girls. I think two were sisters. One was a cousin. And they loved our energy. They loved Felicia. They bought us. What do you? What do you like rolling well, I your don't know. eyes? They say, you know, people say things. I don't. They love that you were at the show. Well, you know, because maybe I got their mothers would num- I got this girl's number. I'm going to give her a shout out. All right, because I want her to listen to the pod. <laughs> they were dying when they heard we had a pod. Oh God, what was her name? I'm like Ez, Ezmira, uh, uh, Ezmira. I think. I don't, I don't know, but, but I, they were so fun. They were like born and bred Brooklyn. One lived in New Jersey, but they were just such a blast. And then they said, where are you sitting? I said, oh, we got like floor seats. So then we go to our seats and I'm like, holy shit, Ma, we are close. Yeah, we were like the 14th row back. Or we the were 15th? so close. And we were and on the aisle. That was really key. The aisle was the, the key. Aisle. Right. But what? What what made me realize is why we felt really close was there was no GA. There was no general mission section. So usually when I go to a show, Dave or Fu or any of my Daves, there's a huge general mission section. And then I'm sitting right behind the GA and then I can't see. Like I couldn't see Dave Grohl this summer. But then I was like, oh, I wish I was higher. But but this. The show was very enjoyable. I still like. Let's discuss. Okay, let's discuss. His dancers were amazing. Yes. And they were dancing real hard around him. And yes. I felt now this is my third Justin Timberlake concert. I've been I've seen every single tour. Could you say I'm a, a little bit of a JT fan? Um and obviously like all the drama with Britney, I mean, I, I wish he gave Britney some credit because he does have two big hits because of her. Cry Me River and What Goes Around Comes Around. Like I believe those are for because of Britney. Um but I just didn't think he was like hitting the moves as hard as in his previous tour. First, can we just discuss, um, you loved his wardrobe. I did. I love the big baggy pants. Because why, you tell me, tell me why. Because a lot of the actors in Korea and the models wear them. Yeah. And so, actually, well, Asia, I mean, Japan, you know, they all kind of wear them. So we're sitting and these, these two guys behind us were like, Justin's going to come by us. And like whoever, if, get, if somebody gets a selfie, we'll text it to each other. For a good hour, we had like security passing me back and forth, back and forth, like preparing for Justin to come the walk down the- to, to to come walk. It, it, they were they were prepping this for like one hour. Let alone, I heard from a source that the reason they do this is because apparently fans were like grabbing him. Oh, and I'm like sure it's terrible. Touching his ass. Yeah, I know. Awful. I mean, I would have never. I would have never like touched him. I would have just like brushed him. <laughs> <laughs> just creepy. Kidding. So yeah, so then he he passes us and damn did I get a good shot. I it was some of my best cinematography yes. cinematography it, that moment. It, it was really good. Because when I showed people there that night, that video, I was texting it to strangers. So like, can you text me that? Can you text me that? So that was exciting. And then I'm sorry, Mama, I didn't realize you, Felicia was you were dancing the whole night and you were very you were beat after. I was beat. And Felicia, stand, well, I was also standing the whole. You had to take a seat at Jamaica, and there are no <laughs> seats at Jamaica. So on she, the floor. She did sit on the, the floor. At the train station. I did have a vision that I thought, like, if a cop comes here, they're going to call an ambulance. But guess what? There was no presence of cops. And nobody gave a shit. Only two girls stopped us and said, right. is she okay? Right. Now, a Yankee game had let out. This Justin Timberlake concert let out. you think they would have had some sort of presence at Jamaica. Nothing. There was none. None. Did I feel safe? No. Yeah. Oh, no. you didn't? No. no. Oh, see, over that <laughs> section, I felt perfectly fine. I don't know. I was a little disappointed. There was nobody there being like, are, is she okay? Like, what? Like, and every, we could have gotten an Uber from Jamaica, oh, but I just yeah. was worried about you walking, us looking, us not knowing. And not like, knowing the area. Yeah. Right. So it worked out all fine. Felt better in a little while. Got up on my own. Yeah. And you did it. And, and made, then I, and I told I you to sleep over. But I did not but want to. did not want to sleep over. And I made it home in 20 minutes. So on Tuesday, the next day, at approximately 5.19 p.m. Eastern, he cancels his second show at Which Barclays. was in 
Was that New Jersey or Barclays? Oh, was it in New Jersey? I think so, because that's where Oh, I'm... it was in New Jersey. This makes sense because the two girls I know were had tickets for New Jersey, and then the next day he said he was rescheduling it. Okay, I thought it was at Barclays. It's, it was in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. I think, what the fuck? You have to cancel the show, fine, but at 5 19 p.m.? Yeah, that would have, because if I we would have been on the train, I, I would have been real, I would have been really upset. So imagine how many people were on their right, way, right, were right. eating their dinner. Yeah. yeah also, yeah. I know somebody who had tickets. She said, she, I said, did Ticketmaster contact you? No. no. She found out via Instagram, which is how he announced it. Yes, but. Usually, you would get notified from Ticketmaster. How does n- n- Ticketmaster notify 20,000 oh, people? Oh, it's just a... Pl- it's a s- oh. If you bought a ticket, it, there's an automated... Oh, okay. It's an automated okay. system. Maybe we have he, artificial intelligence he, now. You're they, right. The ticket he might have, he might have canceled at that moment. Five, not... He must have, but like, what was the injury? God if knows. you could, If anyone here knows what the injury was, Chris Rosa said he chipped his tooth on a liquor bottle. He just... <laughs> that's ridiculous. Oh. He hates him, he said. God. So, shout out to Chris. Um... <laughs> I really want to know, but okay. Justin did say he's making it up, and and then I read all the comments, and people were like, "I can't make it, I can't make it." Well, and if people you can't have other make lives, it, you have other, do you get your money back? At yes, least? you get oh, your money back. Okay, you get your money back. We've had shows get canceled on us, but not two hours before. Right, right, right. Um, but look, we had a blast. We had a great time. Thank you, Fel. That it was we had, fun. We had so much fun. It was fun. Did you have a hard time recovering? Were you okay the next day? I was fine the next day. Yes, as I got home, and, I struggled. <laughs> And and I was probably home all day and did nothing. Right. We'll talk about what you watched. All right. So oh. first, uh, news. First, I just want to open up. I'm not drinking alcohol. <laughs> not this, as satisfying as, as the one you did last week. I thought this was pretty nice. Oh, okay. This, friends, is Celsius. Sparkling lemon lime flavor. Now... This is a, Felicia sticks at her tongue. Ooh, Hard mind. flavor to find at a store. We purchase it on Amazon. It's the only flavor that I could really muster. Um, I did listen to a podcast with the CEO of Celsius, and I learned a lot about it. Um, it like gets your metabolism going, you know, and, and, and it's an energy drink, and it's I only wonder, ten I calories. Wonder, oh, I wonder whether that's true or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like science and shit. <laughs> science and shit. Anybody could put anything on a can. No, mom, it's not like. It's not like false advertising for TV shows. Like you can't lie about shit if it's approved by the FDA. Yeah. Okay. It's a I non. It's like a non. Um, uh, what's it called? No, it's not. Oh. Um, it's no alcohol. It's a. It's a. It's what's it called? Sparkling? Casey, like stop it, mom. Fizzy. <laughs> no, there is a non fizzy <laughs> flavor. It's a non z. Oh my god, non calorie drink. Like it removes. Casey, do you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm still drunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so back to the news. Netflix cancels bop, 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 Jeff Goldblum's show Chaos. <laughs> I told you, you know, we tried I, it. We I tried, tried it. it. We didn't know. I didn't I, tell you I, that we tried it. I, I tried it, and I think I I made it through the second episode, or the maybe you got further than us. Oh god, yeah, it wasn't great. No, it wasn't great. Um, I will say Sundance has commissioned. I can't wait for this. A limited series. Are you ready for this, Casey? Wasp Woman: Murder of a Cult Queen. <laughs> These are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> Cults, queens, and wasps. <laughs> Wasp woman. I can't I, wait. It's okay. a three-part talk telling the true story of Hollywood actress Susan Cabot, who was found bludgeoned to death in her L.A. mansion. Do you know who this woman is? Wait a minute. Name Who's Susan familiar. Cabot? I don't know. You'd have to look her up. Did, Susan Cabot. Was she an actress? Name sounds Oh, funny. my God. Beautiful. Oh, she was older. Yeah, she, this is, she was born in 1927. Oh, she's she real much older. Old. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she was an actress. What? She was murdered? Holy shit. All right, I'm down for that. I don't know where the cult queen part comes in. Um, everyone's probably heard about this news. A reality show focused on the wives and girlfriends of Kansas City Chiefs is in, is in talks for Bravo. And obviously, guys, Taylor Swift is not going to be on this fucking show. And I bet you Brittany Mahomes maybe will like be the leader of this, but wags. Kansas City Chiefs. Ah, what do you okay. think? I don't care. Okay. <laughs> do you care that Amazon canceled the Who's the Boss sequel with Tony Danza and Melissa Milano? <gasps> I didn't even know that was in talks. Like present day? Yes, there was in talks. Oh, God. I had Thank no idea. God. I Thank got God bad they, vibes Thank from God. Tony Danza. Thank- 
Didn't he like have some video that went viral of him on the red carpet being a complete asshole? I have no idea. But I he thought must've... he had a reality show where he was like went back to school, became a teacher. Yes, yes. yes. And like he seemed like a really decent guy. And I then there was a viral real... video of him I've... on the you red carpet what? being an he, asshole. Maybe do you ever think maybe he just had a bad night, or maybe he was you know people were like you don't know what trans you, you are know, so right. Felicia. You know you don't know what transpires You're in right. your lives You're before, right. before, during, after. And have you, you heard about the Anne Hathaway apologies? No, she was a bitch in two. Press junket interviews. If you're doing a press junket yeah, interview, you can't be a bitch, right? And they're they're resurfacing, and she actually fucking wrote to her publicist an apology letter for something that happened during her press tour for Les Mis. Well, that was quite. That was. A I long time know, ago. and I think that was the same journalist who had a bad circumstance situation with Blake Lively recently. That's. I have a feeling that journalist is a prick. It's a female. And I saw the footage, and, and she was not a prick. Oh. She was asking why were they standard why, questions. Why do, why do both of them be so nasty to her? Then I just think those. I don't know. I don't know. All right. I, it was the question, the way she asked it. I don't know. It wasn't I? I, I, I don't have the the information. No, I don't have the uh, interview to show you. Right. Okay. Yes. All right. So your favorite actress, who's everywhere right now, who you've been talking about, Nicole Kidman. Um, she's teaming. I didn't say she was my favorite act. What I know that, I that was a that? joke because oh. last week you were like, "They're moving. I'm, like, she's, okay. I'm over this. She's Got ever it. the author. She's teaming up for another. Like she did Big Little Lies with this author Leanne Moriarty and uh, Nine Perfect Strangers. She's adapting another mystery novel called Here One Moment. As like the one of the producers, right? But I believe she'll star in it as well. Well, she's got to, I guess, grab it while the while it's hot. You know, get on it. Before what? Like her face falls? Before like, her face falls. Before, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, she's got to be in her early, late 40s, early 50s, maybe. Oh, how old is Nicole? Isn't Nicole, that interesting? I mean. Nicole Kidman is 57. 57. Oh, she looks so good. Yeah. But like, think about this. Like Ramona and some of the housewives turned 60 and they look good too. Y- well, you it's know, amazing if you have a lot of money, go to a good plastic know, surgeon. You, you too can look but good. But you don't have, you, you're not like that wealthy, but you too look good. You know what I'm saying? So you got like 14, 15, 16 years on these women. If you had that money, do you think you would have done whatever they're doing? If, I think it's too late for me. I should have I should have probably mm. taken, my, taken care of my skin when I was younger. What would you have done differently? Different skin products taking care of it better. Okay, but I, I, I'm not I, talking about skin products. You Would know, you have done a facelift? I, Would you have done no, that stuff? You know, I, if you remember before your wedding, you I, wanted to do I Botox. Thinking of it, and, and I you went, were "Oh man, if it really goes bad, I, I'm going to be it. miserable in right. front of you know for pictures." So I just backed away. Do you think that point is too late for Botox? You know what I mean? Uh, the, uh, Talking about the wedding, they, our anniversary is tomorrow. I know. So that was about eleven years ago 11 in twenty thirteen. Wow, you were wow, skinny. you were young. Yeah, but, Mom, it's not about it's not about your body. Skinny. You were too skinny. So you're sixty three, right? And you think sixties is too young for is too like Botox? Is no, I past? think they say in the forties you should start if you're going to do it. Didn't they? Which doctor said that? Somebody said. <laughs> I don't remember who said. I thought they said you should start Botox at seventeen. <laughs> Seven. Kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sure it's more money for Did them you than hear pocket. They already dropped the Met Gala theme and they already announced who the co chairs were. This is, I've never seen it get dropped this early. When is the Met Gala it's normally? Every, every year at the first yes. Monday of May. Okay. So what, what is the theme? So first, I'm going to tell you who the, the co chairs are. Okay. okay. Actor Coleman Domingo, who you'd recognize. He right. was in Euphoria. He was in that new movie, Rustin, that was nominated. Um, British race car driver Lewis Hamilton and ASAP Rocky and Pharrell Williams. Pharrell Williams is good. ASAP Rocky. Okay. The the theme is going to be super fine tailoring black style. It's all about like male black. And it's going to go back to like Harlem back in the day. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's interesting. I've just never... So this is seen it get dropped this, is this for early men's, May. More men's fashion than it women's. is, but I'm excited to see women dr- in suits. I love a woman in a suit. So why? I. I just love it. In fact, I was just watching like I didn't finish it. Grays and uh, Meredith Grey, Ellen Pompey was wearing like a white button down with like a loose tie while she was going to see um, Felicia. No, no, no Felicia. she's a choreographer. I know who she is. I can't. I oh, can't. it's gonna fucking kill me. Yeah, it'll, it'll, she was. She's so she's amazing. She's actually sisters with Felicia Rashad. What? No, she's not. Yes, she is. I'm 99.9% sure. Grey's Anatomy, Richard's wife, Catherine Avery. 
No. That's the character's name. Okay. Played by Debbie Allen. Now. You think Debbie Allen. And Felicia Rashad are sisters. What? Siblings. Oh, wow. Felicia Rashad. She's right. Blowing my mind. Wait, now I want to see who Felicia Rashad's parents are. I can't wait to edit this one. (laughs) All right. More news. This everyone's talking about. Netflix dropped update. Nobody wants this. Is getting it uh, picked up for another season. Congrats to our friend Jackie Tone and And Kristen Bell. She's not our friend. I know, but (laughs) congrats to the team. Yes, but they've got new showrunners. And do you know who they are? No, Jenny Conner. uh, She did Girls. Okay, so I wonder if it's going to have a little bit more of like a girls vibe. I'm not thinking that's going to have a girls vibe, but maybe it'll be. Maybe it'll be more realistic. Maybe they'll do some more interfaith relationships. Maybe. Maybe they won't make Jewish girls look so annoying. (laughs) They really do make them look annoying. But then again, you know, when they portray any group, whether they're Italian, Irish, Jewish, they make all the women, doesn't matter what race you are, I find they make them all annoying. Italian women, they make them very annoying. The men weren't annoying. Men and men annoying. Adam Brody is a fucking hero. Even even his brother was fun. Right. Jackie Tone's husband. But it doesn't matter whether you're Jewish, Italian, Irish. The women are annoying. Whatever you are. Asia, they always make them annoying. This is a really good note. This is a really good network note. The women of, they just make them so annoying. Yeah, I can't imagine why. I, I was guess waiting women for you to chime in. I was waiting for you to chime in, Casey. Men are and men are dumb. So like what? Yeah. But no, they do make Jackie dumb. Tone's husband a little dumb. Well, yeah. <laughs> but men are dumb and women are smart and annoying. But Adam, you know what I forgot that Adam Brody was in that no one's talking about? He was in Fleischman's in trouble. Was he? How come he I was, remember seeing him in that. He, Jesse, he played Jesse Eisenberg's, I don't know, friend or, or oh, maybe right? friend or Casey, brother. Casey, do you remember that? Has, so I Brody, never finished watching that either because I what? just I, I just couldn't finish watching it. Oh, we enjoyed it. I oh, love Lizzie yeah. Kaplan. She oh, was the in Diplomats that. coming back also. So, Tom, it is. Yes. I don't watch the Diplomat. I really enjoyed that. And is that what's the her one name? with Felicity? Yes. What's her name? What's her real? Carrie Russell. Yes. How yes. many seasons is that? So far, it was only one. Now they're coming back with the second. Oh, so I could do that and catch uh, yes. up. I thought it was very enjoyable, oh. and I certainly will find the second season. Now I'm looking forward to it. Oh, as long this as they is don't exciting. Screw it up. Felicia, finally something. Something. All right. I'm, I'm not finding regular TV all that fascinating. Well, I did read, you know, they're saying like, in general, like the US economy, jobs and unemployment is, unemployment's down, jobs are on the rise, except in Hollywood. Interesting. Why do you think that is? They're saying reality television is not dead, <sighs> but. They should kill it. No, mom. That's like all of my jobs. What are you know, fucking talking know, about? They I should know, kill it. By the way, the only shit I'm liking right now is reality television. That's Take that back, liking. toy, toy, toy. That's, that's Take that liking. back. I, none of my friends watch it. We all hate it. Mom. I'm sorry. Literally, Bravo is reality television. I know that. And you, you I love watched Andy it. and Jeff Lewis I, I, and all I those watched guys. it, but now I'm getting over it. Mom, but you can't be done with reality I, television. I am, I am more than done. I'm very upset with you. Well, that's okay. It's literally you, like you could be upset with me. The over income reality. and like lifestyle for like half of the people I know well, is like reality television. The yeah, let's, let's not give it to the. No, I'm talking about the crew. I'm the crew. I feel yeah okay. But in general, Hollywood is on a decline, and it's not just reality television. It's scripted. They're just not greenlighting yeah, wh- okay. as much. Why? It's because of all the mergers. People are scared oh. to spend money. Okay. It's 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 a. Hopefully that. I don't know. Hopefully passes, passes. by in about a year. All right, it's time, Mom. It's officially time to <laughs> buy Felicia. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, 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 we did not talk no, about mine. Uncircumcised Gems. I want to start the week off with, because I just watched it, Dr. Odyssey. <sighs> Mom, I think it's that growing on me. Was, oh, that <laughs> did you show watch this last week? night was, or when, yeah, I did watch this week. That truly was the worst piece of shit I have ever seen. I was embarrassed. And by the way, when that guy, Ken, who I've seen in other yeah, he's things. Playing him, he's playing, I, he's himself. playing himself. Yes, he is playing himself. You know the I guy have, who does all the plastic surgery, a la and Ken? He's been on, I've seen him on Botched. I've seen him on a lot of shows. Oh, he was on Botched. Yes. Okay. But he's anywhere he can get his hands onto. He's not a good actor. And Well, he was, he's, he's no. I, I, I love that Ryan Murphy gave him a whole spot. Mm-hmm. And then I knew, you knew. First of all, wait at the spoiler w- w- when when the doctor and Joshua Jackson had that moment. I, I was I like a fake kiss. I went no. I was screaming no, 
no, no. Well, I was like, but fucking they kiss. I'm gonna this. This will be done. Yeah, but then Thank they God gave him they when he's he was in front of his makeup mirror. Was this not the nip tuck moment? This I, was nip I, tuck. I, I knew. Through through. I, I said they are giving him five minutes of fame, and then he's gonna die. And then, and I swear to you, I swear that's what I thought. And boom, he died. <laughs> it was so typical that they because they gave him a, a long scene. Why? Just applying crap with lovely music behind him. It was a musical him. number. It was, he didn't say anything. Oh, it was, and he didn't say anything, thank God. But it was like, oh, this guy's going to die in his sleep. And oh, in sleep? You thought he was going to die in his sleep? I, 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 the sleep, it doesn't matter. I thought you he was going to die. Gonna die Absolutely. And, and it was just, and then the whole premise with the plastic, and Gina, it's Gina Gershon, right? She, so this is what I was oh, going to say. the worst wig. The worst. The worst wig. Oh. Now, you didn't see last week's the no, singles I did week. Not. No, no. Thank God. It's just Shania awful. Shania Twain was on last week. You said that. I am enjoying that they're having like big names come on and, and have some sort of character. I didn't recognize Shania Twain. Later on the internet, I saw a picture of her and I was like, holy shit, that was Shania Twain. I had no fucking clue. I enjoyed <laughs> last night's episode because, yeah, why? It, because of Nip Tuck. I just thought so much Nip Tuck right Tuck now. Nip Tuck was better. That was... Uh, Besides the Ken, it was the no, Ken, it was only the no, Ken. It was the, the Ken guy's part mother like, who I the wanted Ken to part stab. Like, I hated the Gina Gershon character. I hated her. I hated yeah, the other girl that good. nose fell off. She was snorting coke. What? <laughs> who does that when you have a nose job? What's wrong with yeah, you? Snorting coke after a nose job? Right, that is really. I mean, they're so stupid. Okay, I mean, so I realize listen there to are this. a lot of stupid people in this world, but listen oh. to this. A nod to Jamie and Jamie's friend Ashley. Listen to this. Jamie heard from her friend that there's a theory that Joshua Jackson, his character, never recovered from COVID and the whole Dr. Odyssey is, is in his dreams, <laughs> which kind of aligns to the ridiculousness of the show. Is this all big one? F- is he still s- unconscious in isolation? Oh, I goddamn hope not. God. I fucking hope not. I, it, because if it that's is. the case, I'm not happy. It's awful. And the other guy who plays the nurse, that his mother like shows up, and she says, "Oh, why did they have different accents?" <laughs> I don't know. He's Br- he's got like this British thought, accent. I, does he have a British accent? He's got an accent, some so sort of got, accent. It, he, he definitely has an accent. Then she said, "Oh, we're going to spend now." She's had major face surgery with the, with the tubes and everything, and she says, "Let's spend the next the next day going on a a, a wave runner." You don't do. She didn't that. say wave runner. What was it? What was it that she, she said wanted? Sea bot, and I didn't know what that was. Well, it, they, they, <laughs> they were going to be. What's a sea bot? You think she, underneath, under the ground? I don't know. Like a submarine? A sea bot? I, was like, I what don't the know. Fuck but they didn't do any C-bot? of that. They didn't do it. But she was then also she fainted. ridiculous, and she fainted from. Yeah, she was ridiculous. Also, the characters were so over the top and so comical that I. But just, isn't that Ryan Murphy? Yes. Which and like, is we don't do American I'm, Horror Story. We're not doing grotesque. Like, I can only imagine how ridiculous those shows are. Do you right, know what I mean? Right. But like, we're was, still doing Aaron Hernandez, and we're we're not we're 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 watching it slowly. Casey, we're watching it slowly. I'm done with Doc Dodd. Don't make me watch it again. All right. I appreciate you putting in it the work. Just really, you didn't do Brilliant Minds because we can't no. strike also, through. I that. also don't think it was on this week. Why? Because it didn't. I think I had it taping. Oh. I stuff sometimes I don't know why. I don't know, but I don't I know. I like seeing Joshua Jackson his ridiculousness. I also like seeing the celebrity guests. Ugh. But I can't decide if I should just accept how absurd it is. It is absurd. It's absurd. It's absurd. It is absurd. Okay. I know you don't like reality television, but one of my loves is Love is Blind. Right. Okay. And I forgot... My, why I love Love is Blind, and I told you about this the last... Now, a lot of people, I don't know if you watch Love is Blind in the UK. If you haven't, I suggest, because it, it was great. I told you about this last season or two seasons ago. The best episode is when you meet the parents. Seeing the dads, okay? I If I could cry, this is what I'm going to cry, okay? One of the girls, Alex, she introduces Tim to her father. This is wild, mom. Her mom has MS, Dad can't handle it. They get divorced. Then dad gets MS. Payback's his, a bitch. And his um, new wife has MS. Apparently, like, they all have MS. He was, like, couldn't walk. Speech was not great. Mm-hmm. But was so, like, was emotional, was crying. He seemed really sweet. And Tim was just very respectful to him. And it was really, it was a really nice moment. I don't think they're going to make it. Side note. But when you meet the parents, it's, like, really amazing. 
And then one of the moms was a psycho and dropping F-bombs left and right and was like, you need a prenup. And she's like, let me ask you a question. Prenup. Doesn't it only make sense if you have money? Yeah. Why? So if you don't have money, why would you do and it? And you sign up I a have prenup. No idea. What the, how does that I work? I don't know. Unless the prenup is about, I don't know, children, furniture. That's like, like what to is be that? Silly. And the daughter was like, I don't have any money yet. Yeah. I'm going to law school and maybe I'll make well, money. Well, maybe they're doing it for but if down they make, the future. But if you make money together, in a marriage. Together. Then it's split. Is that right? So right. Okay. So the mom is stupid enough to be like, you need a prenup. She yeah. has no fucking money. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I. And then somebody said, who got a post nup? What is it recently? What's a post nup? Some celebrity was before? like, you got a post nup. Before? No, a post nup is or like is that- while you're married, like you could get a post nup. I don't know what that. I don't know. Entail, I don't know. But, but also, I posted about Leo Brody. I told you about the guy who was going on about his Rolex and his money. Right. 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 And then I saw his Jewish star necklace, and I right. was upset. And he was awful, and everyone who watches the show knows how awful he is. But I still want to follow him. He still got. He still proposed. She said yes, so dumb, and then cut to a graphic that said they didn't go to Mexico. They went to Miami, and they broke up. Now, not a surprise. Not a surprise, but I heard that Netflix, like budget-wise, only had room for six couples, and there were seven. So I'm like, that's so fucked up that, like, I feel like part of the the gimmick or part of like being on the show is if you propose, you get a trip to Mexico and you guys can see if this works out. So I wonder if they were like, hey, you're, we're not going to take you guys to Mexico. So you think the producers w- were saying to them, listen, we can't do this. Somebody was. Stay, like, in the, stay in the States. It's cheaper. Yeah, but like, then they had to put up with their own money. Maybe. But he has so much money, so. Oh, suppo- but so, so meanwhile, this guy, Leo Brody, I found him on Instagram, of course, and he's leaning into it and he knows how ridiculous he was. I think he's realizing, fuck, the internet is destroying me, and he's making fun of himself. So right. now I could appreciate that very much. I don't know why everybody's so surprised when they say and do, and they're on, you know, air or something, and they say and do stupid things. That I think it's you not forget when you're filming a reality that show something's, that it's going to go. No, all I think over you forget that the cameras are there. Might be. No, 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 no. You forget. You know, a good reality camera operator is a fly on the wall, right? And that's what makes the best. Reality shows is when you don't get involved. So, yeah, he forgot. Well, he came off stupid. I know. Um, so there's this other couple, Nick and Hannah. And Nick, in the pods, came off very suave. They called him Rico Suave. Everyone thought he was probably really hot. Seems like he said he was a football player. Seems like he was going to be this like kind of big macho guy. And he's, he's skinny, but I think he's attractive. He said he had a pool table in his crib, blah, blah, blah. They have to go home and meet the parents. Guess where he lives? In the basement of his parents' house. <laughs> so Hannah says, pool table. In the basement, behind like a, a, sh- a closet, is right. like a, a pool table in storage. Right. I was like, what a fool this guy is. She's 26. She's the youngest. And he, and I know you don't think I know how to boil water. I know how to boil water. This homie does not know how to boil water. He claimed he was like a cook. So she's like, oh, can you boil the pasta? And he was like, so... How much water should I put here? And like, what do I turn this up to? Like this guy. How old is he supposed to be? 28. And he lives with his parents. And he didn't say that. He didn't say that in the pods. Because he didn't want to. Then he knew. He knew. And there's another guy. Spoiler. What What is a sleep test, Casey? If a guy goes to do a sleep test, is that when you leave? Are you Are you texting somebody, Casey? As I talk about a male texting and cheating. Are you texting? I was looking up dank memes. (laughs) Sorry. Um, So this guy leaves to do a quote unquote sleep test. And then she finds like fetish texts to another girl. And bye. So that couple's done. Then this other guy drops. I really hope I'm not ruining this for people if you haven't seen it. I feel like Love is Blind is one of those things you have to watch like in the moment because the internet just destroys it for you. Then there's this other guy and it was just revealed. Now, how do you feel about this, Felicia? He what? didn't tell. He proposes to the girl. Yeah. He didn't tell her up uh, until a few days before the wedding that he's got three kids, but they're, it's his kids because he donated his sperm. I don't know if I'd be that mad. Hmm. Because but does he have is he supporting three kids? Nope. He just don't need the sperm. He's like, I just wanted to help the family. We haven't really it sounds like maybe he knew the couple. I'm oh, not really friend, sure. Friend, I'm not sure. Maybe. Or did he just do it to get some money? He's not parenting these kids. I don't know well, if I I'd be, like to be if I Well, if he knows about it, you know, yeah. sometimes you donate doesn't necessarily mean that it was used. Right. It's not but, like he donated to a sperm to, bank. Right. He did not right, do that. Right. He didn't have three million kids out there. Maybe it was for a friend or maybe- I think he said he knew them. You know. So she's like, 
Now it's like, dun, dun, dun. Will she say yes? So Casey, if you dropped that you had some sperm babies, do you think I'd care? Um, I guess it depends on the circumstances. You mean like if I had like... Donated some needed sperm? Some, needed some cash in my yeah, 20s yeah, and yeah. made a deposit at the bank? Um, I feel like that's something you would have done. Did you do that? Never. <laughs> I just want to make sure you didn't do that. I just want to make sure. You don't want Lennon meeting up with his... I get what you're saying about like being financially responsible for other children, but I think but it's not. All, but no, no, but, but also okay. it's, just weird to, to it's just weird to know that you have somewhere. children existing somewhere. Well, <clears throat> like even if you're not on the hook for them financially, I just think it's kind of weird that your genetics are out there. It is weird. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, and like, and it only counts if it's the ones that you want to take care of. Like, that's the only way that, well, I'm sure you, they that you feel connected that, to that child. Have, it's yeah. funny. All the secrets are from the men, not the women. Really? Yes, that's no girl. There, no, not nothing's yet. being dropped not by these anyway. women. Not yet. So anyway. the next part of Love is Blind is next week, and that'll be the weddings. Now, Lennon is enjoying Love is Blind. He asked me the other day, can I watch a little with you? When he Jesus, watched a little. Show, you're showing him Love is Blind? A little. He sees a little. My friend shows, Jessica shows um, Arden Love is Blind. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? There's no sex. They're not, we're not, you know? There's no. There, there's you think no, he's going to think that's the way of the world? He doesn't. I, Mom, he I saw two not. seconds of You're it. Kind of norm, normalizing. No, 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 no. It, right. He no, saw yeah. two seconds when they were living. I explained to to him, Lennon. This is the phase where they I, live I, together. I, I can't. I, I I've lost he all likes, control. He <laughs> he likes the weddings when he sees if they say I do or or I or, or no. So I didn't really mean he was sitting and watching it with me. He asked me for two seconds and I let him watch for five. Okay. I've watched the Bad Monkey finale. Oh, how was it? This is a show that I don't think this was great, the show, but I enjoyed it. It was fine. The best part of the show, hands down, is the soundtrack. Casey and I are listening to it. It's fucking amazing. Every song is a Tom Petty song, but it's covers. And the covers are fantastic. If you don't watch Bad Monkey, put on the soundtrack. It's everywhere. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple. This is a huge plug for it. Um, they, it did end where there could be another season. Maybe they're hoping. There could be another season. They're like, oh, another case. I mean, it's, mm. it, it, it's, you know, they can, even if it's three years down the line. I do feel this show would be better as a binge. I think the week to week for some shows, and I feel this way about Tell Me Lies, which you don't watch, right. which is about like college sex, right, is, is a great binge. I did, the first season was a binge. The week to week, and this is what shows used to be week to week. Right. It just one, feels one differently. A week. One a week works for Dr. Odyssey, for Grey's Anatomy. Oh, yeah. Binging is better for these type of shows. Casey and I did the Menendez documentary. And oh, holy- not, not the- So we're still oh, the watching re- the, the real scripted. Do- I mean, the document. We're okay. watching the scripted and the documentary came out. And I was like, we got we to gotta pause scripted. We got to watch this documentary. It's only an hour and 55 minutes. And holy shit, did I learn a lot. What more did you learn? I think in the 90s, when this, which happened. I was a kid. Right. I always thought, oh, like they're on trial to like- Determine if they if they're guilty or not of killing. That wasn't the question. There was never a question of did they do the murder. It's why. No, no. The question was what was going to be their punishment. Are they going to get for life? Are they going to get the death penalty? The question was what they were going to be charged with. Right, right. Which which held different consequences, and they were trying to get them with first degree murder, which was just like, and that was based also on motive, which was like at the time. They were like, well, these are just kids that were looking rich at rich kids, rich kids that wanted to take their parents money, money. There was a mistrial. The first trial, there was, it was they couldn't agree the, oh, the jurors. Okay. okay, so then there was a mistrial. Right. The second trial, and this is why this is coming back to light. The second trial, it was all about whether or not, like, it was all about the murder. The first trial was all about the sexual abuse. Okay, and because of the sexual abuse, there was in this documentary there were jurors. All the women said. These guys do not deserve to be in there for life. They were abused. This is not considered. Do they have documentation that, in fact, they were abused? Yeah, the because ta- they the, said it. The tapes. <laughs> they have tapes? There's they have tapes with a therapist. There was a cousin that- Witnessed it? No, there was a cousin that they told the cousin when this happened. Like okay. When they were young. They're, and the witnesses they had- explaining how awful the father was. Right. And I'm talking like siblings. Like right, the father's right. siblings were like, yeah, he was like a really bad guy. They, well, said they I, could not find anybody to give a positive character the prosecutor of, of, said of that. the father, right? Which was crazy. Mm. So now the mistrial happens, and it wasn't fair well, because during the trial, I don't. From what I could gather, the jurors were were 
it wasn't just like, hey, they're being charged with first degree murder. They said it could be either or. The, the jury could decide, is this first degree murder or is this um, manslaughter, which would have carried a much smaller sentence. And manslaughter would be like, hey, these kids were abused. They weren't in the right frame of mind. They were like, they felt they were scared for their safety. It was self-defense because this guy, he basically the youngest son confided uh, uh, in his older brother that he would, that he was still being abused. And the older brother went to the dad and said, I'm going to expose the family. And the, the, they really believed that the they dad gonna was going to, that he was going to, was going yeah. to harm them because he didn't want those secrets revealed. Right. Right. I didn't realize how powerful he was. Yeah, why was the he dad? So, because he made so much money. What did he, do? Was a, what he was he? a producer. He was a he record. Was a he produced? was Yeah, but oh. also he grew up like I think he came from like a very famous family in Cuba. And then he was a he was a film During producer. During the revolution, and he, yeah. he lost everything. He came oh. to the states, and then like he so, just where did they live? In Florida to, or Beverly where Hills? Huh? This was Be- all Beverly Be- Hills. Oh, uh, yeah, that's this was all Beverly Hills. I just didn't remember. And that. it took so many years that the mistrial was literally a year after OJ. Right, right. So the first trial, it, the, you know, the jury's hung. Then OJ happens. OJ's proven not guilty. Then the rich white boys come back, and everyone's like, "Not fair." The judge is like, "We can't do this again. Right. We can't have some non-guilty. We can't have some rich white public guy. people right, right. get away with this." Yeah. Now, if un- un- if this were to happen today, uh huh. It the, and the TikTok generation now they're dissecting everything. Right. I'm really feeling sympathy for these guys now. Kim Kardashian put out a personal essay on NBC.com, and it was fascinating why these why this deserves to come back to life. Did and she they, know them when they were younger? No, no, no. Oh, that's she's, a good question. She's, she did, she's now meeting them. Okay. And she's, sure these are not guys that are going to go out on a murder spree right now. Darren, How old are they now? Do we know? Uh, yeah. Their voice is all over the documentary. They're, they're not, it's not FaceTime. They're, right. It's phone calls. What are they, 50 now? This documentary, I highly, highly recommend. Darren Karp mentioned on her podcast, Shaken Undisturbed. I thought this was really interesting. Look at Gypsy Rose. She yeah. murdered her mother. Right. And she got off. Right. Because the mother did crazy shit to her. If this happened now, and because sexual abuse is spoken about so now, much now. Right. more. Much more. Much more. Yeah. Nobody thought back then that boys were getting sexually abused by their fathers. Right. He was always, oh, the uncle of this. And right, then Oprah right, did right. a big special about boys that are sexual, now men coming out. But before that, Oprah was pretty outspoken about that case in particular. Remember, there was like clips of like- Yes, but then she came out w- w- saying that boys are sexually abused. I highly recommend this doc. I thought it was really great. And I, I kind of want these guys to get out. And I feel like if they get out, they're gonna, it's going to be very interesting. It, it, it's kind of like, this guy was so awful. And when you hear the stories and you hear the specifics of what the father did, like in it's fucking too bad that the boy just didn't pack up and leave. Well, that another, was one of the that, that was the, another that was the, that was the process. That was the main argument. That was the argument. Was, was the why argument. Didn't you like, just why leave? Did you just they weren't babies. I mean, no, they could but just they, leave. But they, but they, they were but scared. They had an entire oh, no. lifetime of manipulation. This and, is what's crazy. So the older brother was like, "All I wanted to do was go to Stanford. All I wanted to dream. do that was his dream." And he got in. And you know what the father said? No, you're staying home and you're going to UCLA. Because the dad wanted to rape him. It's so fucked up. The dad would not let him them out of his sight. I do think there was like a control thing there. And I do think that the father was manipulative, not just because he wanted to whatever. I think the father was genuinely concerned that these secrets would be yeah, out. Yeah, um, they probably out. would have eventually. So <clears throat> if he was under their roof, under his manipulation, they could insulate. Did he the, think he was going to keep them that way until they were 90? I, mean, I don't know. Like, man. how long can you keep them? And like, then, like, we were saying, like, if he did such horrible things to these boys, like, did he, you know, sexually abuse the, the Menudo boys and, like, all these other music groups that he, you know, oh, he brought up? Was, yeah, he's responsible oh, for the Menudo. Like, he's. Wow. Yeah. Got to speak to Ricky Martin. <laughs> I'll speak Get him to on Ricky. The phone. <laughs> so, I don't, like, would you watch this? No. Mm hmm. No, I just I I just can't watch these heartbreaking. Do you remember when this went down? Sort of, yeah. Do you I mean, remember anything like what you were thinking? Were you in, you never liked watching court TV? Never. You never. I never, never. saw you watching. I never liked trials. it. I never liked it. And and you know it's kind of out of your control. Grammy was very into OJ because Grammy because well, Grammy knew OJ and knew Nicole and because she, she lived, lived down the block. Yeah, she, she lived, lived down, down the block. block. Right. I'll never forget my grandma. My mother, yeah, my mother. Felicia's right. mom called and said she was on the radio when Nicole, when Nicole got murdered. And what did she say? I wonder what she said. 
Do you remember? No. Marnie, it was so long ago. Mom, I, I know. You know. I know she lived around the corner. They yeah. lived around the corner from my mother. So, what I took away from this, <laughs> what I took away from the Menendez thing was not, I, I always say that being wrongfully accused of worst nightmare. murder was one of my worst nightmares. I guess I want to modify that <laughs> to say an extra layer would be to have a public interest oh. in in it. Because I think that as you kind of saw with the Scott Peterson thing and with- it, Well, it could also turn to shit. Well, the, 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 the media needs- It did turn to shit. The media because needs of the media. a story. Right. They, they need to, to create a, a story that may or may not align with reality, right? And they immediately spun the Menendez brothers into these kids that just killed their parents well, to monsters, take their money. As they call them, monsters. And I said, why right. would they want their money? It's not like they weren't living that lifestyle. They like still they still had tennis very, lessons and had nice well cars. They, had, you know, they, had they knew them. spending sprees. Yeah, they had that. inheritance. Like they didn't need the money. It wasn't about the money. And I, I feel the mother should have just took and those boys what? and left. And the boy said, they told, they told the mom. Right. And she said, she said, too bad. This is daddy. This is what he's doing. Like fucking, that's why they shot her. Right. And they shot her because they said he was, he had an affair. She was afraid of him too. No, and, of course she was. But they also were like, we kind of wanted to save her. So like they shot her. Uh, Look. Yeah. Oh. I mean. They used the word euthanasia, right? They like basically like saying like, we're, we're putting her out of her misery. Yeah. I, I learned a lot. So I recommend it. I watched another documentary that has not been picked up yet for distribution. It's per, got a premiere at South by Southwest Australia. And um, Chicago, and it's called Slice of Life. And two editors that I work very closely with were the filmmakers. They they shot it. They did the audio. They did the interviews. And it was a big story, like a very Americana story about former Pizza Huts around the America have been repurposed, and like what has become of these old Pizza Huts. Why if Pizza Huts had a business? Yeah. The Pizza Hut freestanding buildings were always a very unique... Like, they all have the same windows. Oh, so, so how are they repurposing them? So, like, what... Isn't there uh, a, the one in East Rockaway is like a dry cleaners now, but it, it has the definite shape of, of, a, the pizza of a pizza oh, hut. I didn't know that was a pizza hut. Yeah, you know, it's got that strange shape. You're right. Yeah. Like, they went to, you know, one's a Mexican restaurant, one's a church, one's a bar, one's What's a karaoke place. I think that's great. But they... They, they kept our, their, these editors, these filmmakers drove across America right, and filmed the, this. Right, just the two of them. That's a good idea, and it's great stories. Right, it's just a, that's great, a nice story. There's nobody murdered. There's no, nobody killed. But, and then it's the history of Pizza Hut. Okay, and they even got the owner, like the the guy, the, who, rich, the original, who's ninety three. Right. Dan Carney, one of the two brothers that founded Pizza Hut. And then what happened? They got big. It was a franchise. Right. And then they got too it, big. No, no, no. They, no. Pepsi bought it. Oh, oh. And then once Ooh. Pepsi bought it, that's it. Then they started, you know, not just serving pizza and then wings. And well, then, then it's the whole then, thing. Changed. Ironically. But, but they got paid enough money that they should have just said, okay, bye. And they did, I think. They did it. And right. now, no. Now pizza. they're combining Pizza Huts and Taco Bells. Yeah. So Pizza Hut, is it still around? It's around. They just, like I said, they combine them with. Right, they're KFC's like like at rest and- like at rest stops, right? Hey, Marnie, you and I should drive cross country and film it. There was a. P- I'll tell you where there was a Pizza Hut in Oceanside. Yeah, you had Blockbuster, and you had that Pizza Hut that then became I want to say like doctors' offices. Now it is, but it was like a one eight hundred flowers for a while. Oh right, do you remember that? You remember oh, that? God, yes. Now I remember about. going to Pizza that was Hut, Long Beach, Ev- Long yeah. Beach Road, and Atlantic Avenue. Yeah. I think. Do you are you? Um, we never went to. Pizza. A thousand percent I went to Pizza Hut. Well, you might have gone with your friends, but I did not. You never went to Pizza Hut? No. I don't I, know why anybody living in New York would go to a three chain million pizza. pizza places. Right, 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 right. The best pizza in the goddamn world and outside of Italy, and you guys are, right. people are patronizing why Dom- I would Domino's. Never, I don't I, get it. No, the, the, no, we, I don't think we, do, I don't remember why, I've, I, I've been there a few times. Well, I, I, I could see you and your friends going there. I don't recall going there with I friends. I definitely did not partake. Anyway, slice of life. Um... Kudos to Matt Salah and Rose Tucker. When you get back from down under, I can't wait to talk to you about this. And I hope it gets distributed. You're right. No one gets murdered, mom. This is a very nice story of, Just the, of entrepreneurs. Right. Of what That's what the American that's, dream and, is. And that is a nice story. It's immigrants. It's people yeah. coming here and people Absolutely. wanting to own their own business. And yeah. Who knew, who right? Knew? Have you watched anything else this week? No. Not that you'd be interested in. What do you in. do? It's no longer pool weather. Right, the fall it's is a coming. Very sad. 
What do you do with yourself? What, what do you do with your time? Uh, I don't know. I have appointments. I meet friends. <laughs> like yesterday we met in the clubhouse. Some what do you girls. do? We played Rummy Cube. <laughs> you played Rummy Cube. Okay, yes, okay. Yeah, I get a phone call. Come on, let's go out. Let's have lunch. Let's whatever. Mm. And you have time to watch your Korean shows. Yeah. All right. Next week I'm going to make you watch one thing. I'll tell what? you about that after. All right. So Bravo Minute. Bravo's back, baby. Everything was on this week. We had Real Housewives of Potomac, Salt Lake City, New York, and the OC. It is on. And guess what? who stirs up the drama? Who? In two of the franchises. Who? Who? The Jeff Lewis radio show. That oh. came up in New York. Like, they're throwing it back. Oh, you said on Jeff Lewis, blah, 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 blah. And it came up on the OC. On Jeff Lewis, you said blah, blah, blah. And I just thought that was, like, super interesting. Um, Potomac. Whew. All about Karen Huger's DUI. Oh, I feel like we right. spoke about when this went down. Yes, we did. Jeopardy this week. Jeopardy yesterday. They had the oh my god. They had the categories, which is what Heather Gay on Salt Lake City said: receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots. Right out of uh, brought. Well, yeah. Well, those See, shows. isn't that amazing? <coughs> well, I'm not saying they're not making an impact. They are. <laughs> Just I don't have to like it. Mom, I swear to God. I, so yeah, guys, all the housewives, I'm not hating any of it. I'm just not. I love it. It's enjoyable. And I got to say for Bravo, whoever could tell me this, Darren Carp, when the hell is Southern Charm coming back? I need my Southern Charm. When is it coming back? Thank you. We have a new segment, Felicia. What, which the is? people want to know the truth and honesty from you. It's called Felicia Unfiltered. Add sound effect here, please. Oh, no, she didn't. I don't know what the sound effect is. Maybe it's a can opening. Casey, like, <laughs> like a can like unfiltered, like an opening. What, 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 people, what? everybody who's listening, she's Felicia. What people? You're listening. I think you're making it up. I'm not making it all up. Right, let's... People want to ask you a question. Right. And I'm all that knowledgeable, not. No, but okay. they want your honest opinion because let's say. Maybe they don't have a good relationship with their mother. Maybe their mother passed away. They just want the brutal honesty that you would give them. Okay. okay? If you have a question, everybody, slide into my DMs at Marnie Jagger in, on Instagram, okay? Okay. First question. Is this really legit? Oh, my God, Mom. If I could, if I could make this up, great. From Emily in Brooklyn. Are you ready? My sister started dating this man a few years ago. Her sister's going to be mad, she said, okay, that she's writing it. So she's dating a man that's divorced, has two young kids, and she recently became introduced to the kids, okay? The more she's hanging out with the kids, the more she's noticing they have some serious behavioral issues. They'll have major outbursts in public, and people look at her as if she's their mother, which is obviously pretty embarrassing. During these moments, her boyfriend just shuts down and starts looking at his phone, but she does not feel comfortable reprimanding them. As no should she. What should she do? Red flag, walk away. Is this a make or break in the relationship? A break. Walk away. That's not going to get better. And she's never going to be able to uh, because the father's still the father. And the only, way, the only person who's going to address those kids is the real mother. Not the father. The real mother. And the real mother probably doesn't want to hear about it. Mm. And they don't want it. It's called denial, denial, denial. Walk away from that man. Walk away. It's only going to get worse. I agree. Big red flag. Big red flag. ain't getting better. Huge. Not it getting ain't better. Getting better. Only gets worse. It only gets worse. Right. And you must confront them before anything serious happens. What do you mean you must confront no, them? No, I meant sit down, have a conversation. Mm -hmm. If it's not good, if the guy's going to get on his phone and ignore you, get up and walk away mm -hmm. before you get too serious with him. It's a bad sign. It's also like, I don't, it, it's one thing if like it's your kid having if it's behavioral your kid, issues, you, you, then you have to deal with it. But she cannot, it's not her oh. kid, she can't deal with it. Especially if the kids have really legitimate. If you have any issues when you're dating somebody and you think getting married or having a kid will make it better, does not. It only no, makes it nope, worse. Nothing makes it better. Nothing. And that's Felicia unfiltered. Oh yes, she did. There's nothing worse than being around children who, who oh, have outbursts. And you and you can't say anything. Mm. It's awful. You can't say anything. And I have a hard time saying things also, and just to you guys, and not only you know, both my children about their children because I'm no longer the parent. So I have to walk a fine line and know when I really should very gently step in. Do, do you watch your mouth with me? <laughs> Not with you, but I watch it with Casey. <laughs> I will confront you first. Casey, do you think she is walking a fine line? 
Um, <clears throat> I imagine knowing Felicia that she probably has more opinions than she vocalizes. Thank you. Right. Like I, I would assume that she does keep it, you know. Yeah, I don't want to upset you guys, and I certainly don't want to upset Casey. So I, if I see something really awful, I will confront you. Okay. You by yourself. Right. And then it's up to you how to deal with it. Thank you, Emily from Brooklyn. So that's our new segment, <laughs> Felicia Unfiltered. Girlfriends, boo to be all wrapped up in licious. <sighs> we won't do it every week. We'll do it when we get a question. Okay. All right, guys, bring right. it in. And it could be anything. It could be about finance. It could be about relationships. It could be medical. But remember, that's only my perspective and it's only my point of view. It doesn't make me right, wrong, and different, whatever. I'm just person who was that's a, a disclaimer age. disclaimer yeah. it's my point of view i'm not a doctor i'm not a therapist she's I'm just felicia a, i'm just felicia <laughs> love it right. right now is our segment by felicia by felicia what we're watching this week guess what i'm doing this weekend what <laughs> well first of all there's what a movie on what's coming on i'm gonna tell you okay so there's a movie coming out that we really want to see it's saturday night about snl about the first snl oh. we're dying to see it with nicholas braun i don't know if we'll get to the theaters this week it is our anniversary tomorrow maybe we'll go to the movies we'll see but it is yom kippur right so we're breaking fast with our our lovely neighbors you're breaking fast up in chappaqua yes i am um but my neighbor who i'm breaking the fast with who also has an anniversary this weekend had a milestone birthday i'm not going to drop her age out of respect she's a teacher when I heard that she had never seen Hamilton, it was disgraceful. How can you be a fifth grade teacher and have not seen Hamilton and, you know, reach this age? So I was like, let's go. We're going to Hamilton this weekend. Third time's a charm, baby. Can't wait. Um, this is the show you have to watch. Are you ready? I'm ready. On the 15th, there's a documentary out. And Casey, I'm doing this with or without you. Anatomy of Lies. It's on Peacock. This is why you're going to watch it. It was a Vanity Fair article that dropped this update, this dropped this news. What's it about? Elizabeth Finch was a writer on Grey's Anatomy. And she, people thought she was amazing because she had all, she was taking all these, she was writing stories and episodes about her life, like what she went through. She had cancer, she was raped, all the shit. It came out that it was all a lie. Hey. It was all a lie. What, was it a lie about herself? Did yes. She, she it, just it made up all this shit. Stories that maybe she heard from other but friends or other it, people no, or it, just made it up. But it's it's divulging about this producer writer. Give it to me. Well, she never said it was true. Well, we, there's, so what? Get, get into the documentary. She did say it was true. She said she had cancer. She said- Yeah, but the, the show itself, when they were- when they were, when I she, think it dives into this woman, not the episode on Crazy okay. Anatomy. Okay? okay. So please okay. watch that. Love is Blind, part three will be back. Now, October 18th, there's a movie out with Michael Keaton and Mila Kunis called Good Rich. Oh, what is that about? Tires? Oh, Good Rich. My client's in that. <laughs> Danny D. He is? Yeah. Name drop, who does he play? He plays, I don't remember, but he just told me he's- It's not about tires. No. Danny D is a good man. Give him a nod from the, from the pod. You just did. Danny D. Ferrari, good man. <laughs> he was in um, Oppenheimer. Yeah. And I'm hoping that, I think it's out in theaters, but it'll come streaming. And on the 16th, also Shrinking. Yes, I saw the, this. What is Did that, you the, do season one of Shrinking? No, but this is season two? Yeah, and I Actually, loved it. Actually, season two looked cute. Season one, first episode, it took Casey like a little bit, then he dropped off. I stuck with it, and it was so enjoyable. All right, really quick, the franchise on Max, I love Hamish Patel, who is in Station Eleven. This is a scripted show. I'll give it another shot. It needs some work. I don't know if you're going to like it, but I'll get you signed up for Max. I can't believe you don't have Max right now. This well, is you unacceptable. you gave it to me, and then I don't know what It's happened. unacceptable, Mom, when your streaming I, platforms I, log I, out. Can I, ca I can't catch it on HBO. Like You could try. I don't know how cable works. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Felicia. Goodbye, Marnie. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia.